Good morning, medical students. Today, we will be delving into the intriguing and complex world of donor-derived infections and their impact on transplant recipients. This topic is of utmost importance, as it directly affects the success and well-being of patients undergoing organ transplantation. When organs are transplanted, there is a possibility of transferring infections from the donor to the recipient. We will discuss the factors that increase this risk and how it affects transplant patients. Screening donors for infectious diseases is vital, and considering the immunosuppressive treatment given to recipients, the impact of these infections on patient health is significant. Opportunistic pathogens can exploit a weakened immune response in transplant recipients. Immunosuppressive drugs impair key immune functions and disrupt the microbial balance, increasing infection risk. Monitoring and tailored therapy are necessary for infection control in transplant recipients. In solid organ transplantation, opportunistic infections pose a significant threat to both the graft and the recipient's overall health. In this paragraph, we will undertake a comprehensive review of the various opportunistic infections that can arise post-transplantation. Opportunistic infections commonly encountered in transplant recipients include fungal, viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections. Pathogens such as congida, aspergillus, and pneumocystis gyrovecchiae can cause severe morbidity and mortality in immunocompromised patients. Monitoring for these infections through regular clinical and laboratory assessments is essential to ensure early detection and prompt treatment. Cytomegalovirus, CMV, is a significant viral pathogen known to cause complications in transplant recipients. In this paragraph, we will delve into the intricacies of diagnosing and managing CMV infections in this vulnerable patient population. The diagnosis of CMV infection in transplant recipients involves detecting both viral DNA and serological markers. Techniques such as polymerase chain reaction, PCR, and anagenemia assays have proven to be valuable tools in determining active infection. Management strategies typically involve antiviral prophylaxis, preemptive therapy, and close monitoring of viral loads to prevent CMV-related complications. In summary, the Epstein-Barr virus is often dormant in individuals, but in transplant recipients with weakened immune systems, it can multiply uncontrollably leading to post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorders. Early detection and intervention are crucial, and treatment options include reducing immunosuppression and targeted therapies. Fungal infections are a notable problem for transplant recipients. Early detection is crucial, and various methods can aid in accurate identification. Treatment options include antifungal medications, surgery, and reducing immunosuppression. Preventive measures, like infection control and antifungal prophylaxis, are effective in reducing occurrences. Transplant recipients face challenges from bacterial infections due to their weakened immune system. Common pathogens like Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa are often encountered. Increasing multidrug resistance, biofilm formation, and potential transmission from donors are emerging concerns. Innovative approaches like phage therapy and antimicrobial stewardship programs offer potential solutions. Allogeneic stem cell transplantation is a life-saving treatment for hematological disorders, but graft-versus-host disease GVHD, can occur post-transplantation. Risk factors for GVHD include HLA mismatched transplantations, older donors, and intense conditioning regimens. Prophylactic measures involve immunosuppressive medications and close monitoring. Parasitic infections in transplant recipients, although relatively less common compared to other types of infections, can still lead to significant morbidity and mortality. In this paragraph, we will provide an overview of the pathogenic parasites and their diagnostic approaches in the transplant population. Parasitic infections commonly encountered in transplant recipients include Toxoplasma gondii, Strongyloid stercoralis, and Trypanosoma cruzi. Diagnosis involves a combination of serological tests, direct visualization of parasites, and molecular techniques. Early recognition and prompt treatment are crucial to prevent disease dissemination and improve patient outcomes. Accurate and timely diagnosis of transplant-associated infections heavily rely on laboratory techniques. In this paragraph, we will discuss the advancements and limitations of various laboratory methods used in diagnosing infections in transplant recipients. Traditional methods such as culture, histopathology, and serology remain essential tools in diagnosing infections. However, molecular methods, including PCR and next-generation sequencing, have revolutionized diagnostic accuracy and speed. Nevertheless, limitations such as cost, availability, and the need for expert interpretation should be considered when selecting appropriate laboratory techniques for individual cases. Antimicrobial prophylaxis plays a crucial role in preventing infections in transplant recipients. In this paragraph, we will explore the efficacy, 
resistance patterns, and emerging strategies related to antimicrobial prophylaxis and transplantation. Prophylactic use of antibiotics, antivirals, and antifungals is commonly employed in the period transplant period. While these prophylactic regimens have proven efficacy in reducing infectious complications, the emergence of drug resistance is a persistent concern. Novel strategies, including the development of new antimicrobial agents, prophylactic immunotherapies, and optimizing treatment durations, are underway to tackle these challenges. To effectively minimize infection risks in transplant units, implementing infection control measures is crucial. This includes proper hand hygiene, aseptic techniques, and isolation precautions. Challenges include staff compliance, environmental contamination, and the rise of drug-resistant organisms. Future directions involve utilizing advanced technologies like real-time monitoring systems and creating specific infection control guidelines for transplant units. In conclusion, infection prevention, diagnosis, and management are vital in transplant recipients. Understanding the intricate relationship between immunosuppression and infections is key. Implementing stringent infection control, prophylactic measures, and better diagnostic tools can minimize infections and improve patient well-being.